John Thyme, uh, JT, uh, is the, the call sign that uh, I've been using for the last, for my second flying career. Before that, it was Thin Man, uh, T-H-Y-N-N-E, Thin. Um, and back in the day, it was actually applicable. <laughs> Not any longer. Um, I, uh, I joined the Air Force in July 1969 on number 74 pilot's course. Uh, completed the course uh, and uh, uh, went on to fly Iroquois helicopters. Pilot's course was um, a fascinating thing. Uh, most of the courses at that site, 73 course started with 35 guys, uh, 75 course had, uh, was an academy course and it had 28. We started with 12 cadets and three navigators. We were a small course. The course wasn't actually supposed to run. Uh, they weren't going to run a course in the middle of 1969, but they had uh, five or six of us who had had little medical issues or things like that. So there was a group that was hanging around. Uh, they had some navs that they wanted to, to put through and they said, okay, we'll just do a small course. So we started as a, a very small course. So that was a, a wonderful thing. We lost six of the cadet and it was, um, the course was uh, all through jet. Basically, we did 15 hours flying the windshields as a, a flight grading or a flight assessment period. Uh, if I'd had to do 16 hours, I probably would have failed, but I only had to do 15. Uh, the, uh, and then we went on to the Mackies, which is why the painting's there as a first solo on the Mackie. So I had nearly 35 hours of flying before I went solo, um, but that um, the, my first solo was in a jet aircraft. Um, the course was 15 months and really intense, to be honest. Uh, at the time, they used to say it was the equivalent of doing a Bachelor of Science degree in 15 months. Um, and uh, I didn't find the ground school very, very difficult. I didn't have to work at passing the exams in the ground school. A couple I did, uh, Morse and a couple of other things. Uh, but on the flying, I had to work really, really hard. So the good thing was I could spend time working on my flying stuff because I didn't have to study for the ground stuff. Uh, as I said, we started with 12 cadets. We lost six before we left Point Cook. So six scrubbed out on the, on the ground, or seven. Uh, no, we lost five at Point Cook and then one just after we got to, uh, to Pierce. So we only graduated six cadets. Um, I, I don't know that there was really a common reason, uh, but we lost one guy who quit because uh, he was of Dutch extraction and he used to eat his toast in the morning, toast and jam in the morning with a knife and fork. And he got ribbed relentlessly by all the rest of us, I'll say. Uh, and, and he just said, I can't take this, and he left. He was actually from the same school as me, being the school vice captain. Um, uh, uh, but he couldn't take peer pressure. I don't know how he would have gone in, in the flying stuff. Uh, a couple failed early on um, academics, the, the initial academics, the, uh, and, uh, and there were a couple who... Uh, didn't get through the 15-hour test, the flying test on the windshield. Uh, so I think that's, that's sort of the two on ground school, two on flying and, and one there. Uh, when we got to, to Pierce, we had, uh, we had a, one guy on the course who was a, uh, he'd been an electrical fitter. He was actually a sergeant electrical fitter when he started the pilot's course. He was doing OK. Uh, and about uh, four months in, five months in at Pierce, um, he, uh, he just resigned. He said, no, I, I'll go back to being a, a, a sergeant fitter. Uh, uh, and then the other six of us cadets, the three navs and, a, and three back course midshipmen from the from 73 course, uh, we were the, the graduating students at, uh, in 74 course. Uh, that was September 70. Um, the sensation or sensations, the emotions that you feel when you march onto the parade to get pinned with your wings is something special. It's just, you know, um, I wanted 
for a long time, I said, I, I should get my ashes spread over the parade ground at Pierce. You know, just you know, infuse myself into the future aviators and that sort of stuff. But changed that a little bit over time. But for a long time, that was what I saw as, as something where it was so special to me, uh, you know, whatever it is now, 50, 54, 53 years ago. Um, but um, it, the memories are really, really vivid. Um, there were lots of um, events and things that occurred uh, in the flying. Uh, and it's fascinating. I mean, in, um, in when I was successful with my application, um, I started as a cadet and when I started as a cadet, I was earning the same, very much the same amount as my father was as a railway worker at Ipswich Railway Workshops. And then I started getting my flying pay once we started flying and I was earning as much as my mother was getting as a teacher. Uh, and when I graduated as a pilot officer, I was earning as much as both of them was earning. At, at 19 years old, uh, 18, 19, yeah. So um, life became very, very different for me in terms of being able to, to do things that I wanted and that sort of stuff.